Discord. Share my screen. Can you guys see the screen? Yeah. Cool. All right. Excuse me. My sparkling water is very carbonated. So tonight we're going to talk about essential oils for babies and kids. Um, I just want to start off by saying that I'm not a doctor um, because I'm going to share some things tonight that I do in my home and that I believe in. Um, but of course, you know, you have to do your own research and do what you feel comfortable with. And um, I definitely encourage you to, um, you know, consult your pediatrician if you have any questions on things. But these are things that I feel confident in teaching and um, sharing with you because it's what I do for me and my two kids. Um, hi, Claire. How are you? I see that you're on. Um, so, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jenna and I have um, two kids. I have a four year old and a three month old. And I've been using essential oils on them since they were in my tummy four years ago and since they were three hours old. And we use oils on them every single day. It's a part of our routine. Um, I feel very confident in using them and I hope that you guys can all take away something from this call and incorporate it into your life. Hold on just a second. I'm getting a text about how to join. Sorry, let me just, she can't find it. Sorry, you guys, just a second. Thank you. Okay. So, um, like I said, you know, these are things that we do in our home. If you have questions, I'm happy to help you and guide you through anything, but I do just want to make the claim that I'm not a doctor. So, you do have to do what you feel comfortable with or running things past your pediatrician. Um, <coughs> so for babies and kids, you just need to remember that one drop of oil goes a long way. Um, one drop of oil can service every cell in the body so you don't need a lot. You wanna to remember to dilute with babies and kids um, with a fractionated coconut oil, which is FCO. You can use a jojoba oil, a grapeseed oil, you can use an olive oil, what any, any type of carrier oil that you want to use to dilute, um, those are ones that you would want to use. I love using roller balls. Um, they just make application a lot easier. They're great to throw in the diaper bag. They're great to, um, you know, use on the changing station, especially as your kids start to roll around and it makes changing diapers a little bit harder. The roller balls just make it a lot easier instead of like taking one drop and putting it in your hand and then putting coconut oil and trying to dilute it that way. Um, being proactive instead of reactive. So this is a really big one. This is one that I stress all the time, using your oils every day, all day, because if your children come down with something, it's a lot easier to attack it if you're already in the routine of using your oil. Because one, their immune system is going to be stronger. And so if you start attacking it, the chances of them getting something full blown or very serious are going to be a lot less likely. Um, but their body's also already used to responding to the oils. So you really want to try to use your oils every day and be just proactive in 
um, your usage. Diffusing your oils, having a diffuser. Hi, Melissa, welcome. Um, using your diffuser in your kid's room, in your car, around your house. We have a diffuser in all of our rooms in our house, just so that you're purifying and cleansing the air around you. Again, that's part of your um, routine of being proactive instead of reactive. Carrying your oils on hand and being prepared. Um, I'm gonna just grab something. I forgot to grab it. Hold on one second. I apologize. So sorry about that. So I like to just keep something like this on hand where I'm always using my oils. So I carry this in the diaper bag. So I keep all my oils in there that I need on hand for the kids. Um, I also like to carry some Band-Aids and some Correct X because Correct X is just a wonderful tool to have on hand as well in replacement of like a Neosporin. Um, so just being prepared and making sure that you have them available because you never know when symptoms will come up. Children love oils. Let them be a part of the process. Blending the mixes, applying the oils. They love to help others feel better too. Parker's at the age where now he recognizes his symptoms and he asks for oils. And then he recognizes them in his sister. So if Noah's feeling, you know, fussy or if I say something like, oh, I think her tummy hurts or, you know, she's gassy or whatever it may be, Parker's like, well, let's put some oils on her. He loves to help heal his sister as well. So these are some oils that I really like for kids and the list could literally go on and on and on. Um, these are just some of the top favorites. So lavender, it's most used essential oil for children. A lot of people will have adverse reactions with lavender though. So while lavender most of the time is very calming and soothing, um, it can have the alternate effect as well. Sometimes it can be overstimulating. So um, you may want to replace it with something different. And today is the week of start of BOGOs for this week. So if you buy Pettigrain, you can actually get lavender for free. And Pettigrain is like the men's version of lavender because a lot of men don't like the way lavender smells. So Pettigrain will have a lot of the same similar effects and benefits as lavender, but men respond to it better. Um, it's very, very soothing for, um, it's, Parker, you need to turn that off again. Yeah, or you can go out there with daddy. I'll just turn this down. So can talk to them, okay? Okay. Um, Pettigrain is going to be really great to help promote restful sleep and very similar calming benefits to lavender. Um, so that's just a little information. If you buy Pettigrain today, you get lavender for free. But wild orange is very gentle. It's very powerful. It's uplifting. It's great for digestive support. Frankincense supports the brain, the mood. Um, Mommy's, no, mommy's working right now, Parker. Um, it's very good for wound healing. It heals, feels grounded and safe for babies, kids, and great for immunity support. Roman chamomile supports sense of calm, relaxation, has a sedative effect. It's great for digestive support as well. I'm so sorry, you guys. Excuse me for just one moment here. Chronic 
as we're dealing with kids, right? Sorry about that, I apologize. Um, so a lot of these will have similar effects. Marjoram is a great oil for kids. It helps colic and constipation. It's calming and anxious feelings, great for emotional balance. It's really, really good when they get fussy and it also supports sleep. Rose oil um, is good for all things. If you don't have the rose touch oil, you need to buy the rose touch oil because it is amazing. It's up there with like frankincense and copaiba. It is very, very healing. It's antibacterial, it's anti-inflammatory. Um, Emily Wright, she's one of the owners. Her little girl came down with MRSA. Um, rose oil and oregano and tea tree got rid of her MRSA. She got it from one of those bouncy house things at a party. Rose Touch is amazing for everything and it comes in a roller bottle, so it's already diluted. It's perfect to throw in your diaper bag. I use it on a regular basis. I absolutely love rose. Um, Siberian fur, any of the furs really. Siberian fur, Douglas fur, white fur, if you still have it, they don't make that oil anymore, but that's gonna be really good for decongestion. Melaleuca's antiviral. Arborvarte is a very, very healing oil, especially this time of year where we're fighting all the colds, all the flus, all the symptoms. Arborvarte is a very, very good oil. It's very, very gentle for kids. It blends really well with the citrus oils. It's a very strong antiviral. So you can use this topically in a roller ball or you can put it in the diffuser. Thyme is also antiviral. Cardamom's antibacterial. Any of the citrus oils are gonna be great, especially when you're fighting like congestion and mucus in the body. Any of the citrus oils are gonna be great. So lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit, tangerine. Balance supports grounding feeling. We use that daily, every day to set the tone for the day. So we put it on the bottom of Parker's feet, the bottom of Noah's feet, the bottom of my feet. It's just very, very good. When both of the kids were born, when they were about three hours old, I put a drop of frankincense on their spine and down their scalp um, just to give them a blessing. And then I put balance on the bottom of their feet to just ground them and welcome them into the world. Um, digestion supports digestion system. It's great for colic, constipation. Breastfed babies, it's very normal for them to go up to 10 days without pooping. So, you know, usually by day two or three, they're getting really fussy, their stomach hurts, they're getting antsy, they're feeling kind of like, cramped up a little bit. So putting digestion on them, um, that's worked really, really well for Noah. When Parker had it, he had gone up to four days before he pooped. Digestion didn't work so well on him. We actually used rosemary and ginger and just apply it right around his belly button and up towards his throat, um, like that whole digestive area. Literally, I think the first time I did it, I think he pooped literally like within five minutes applying the oils. It works really quickly. And I was like, thank God, because he was uncomfortable and then they become fussy and kind of like borderline um, colicky. So it just makes us as moms a little stressed out too. On guard, we use on guard every day. We put it on the bottom of their feet. I like the on guard touch roller ball. We put it on the bottom of their feet morning and night. Um, we diffuse a lot of on guard. That's really great for immunity. Breathe and serenity are also some of my favorites for kids as well. So I wanna talk a little bit about supplements just because we are in the cold and flu season. doTERRA makes a line of kids supplements. They make their A to Z um, multivitamin and they make their omegas. I've unfortunately have tried both of them with Parker and he's just not really into them. He doesn't like them. They have switched the flavor of the vitamins. I think the new flavor of watermelon is actually really good. So I think a lot of people are responding better to it. But when they first came out with them, he wasn't really into them. And so I found vitamins that I really like that I've just decided to stick with. But having said that, a lot of people find very good success with the doTERRA supplements. So I just kind of want to say that because I do think it's worth a try. But if you haven't tried them or you haven't started your kids on vitamins and supplements, I'm going to kind of go through our routine on what we do. So 
I just, I just did a video um, on Instagram and on Facebook about doTERRA's adult vitamins, and they are absolutely crucial for our well-being. I can't say enough good things about them. But not all vitamins are created equal. It's really important to do your research and find a good product because you can go to Walgreens, you can go to Target, you can even go to Whole Foods, and you can find some really crappy supplements. So this is the multivitamin that we do for Parker. It's made by the Garden of Life. It's the vitamin code of kids. It's a chewable Whole Foods um, multivitamin. This is what it looks like. So when you're taking supplements, you really want to make sure that it's a whole foods based supplement. And when I say whole foods, I mean that you're getting actual food because that's where the nutrition comes from. As adults, a lot of adults are used to taking like a one a day vitamin. They are crap. You need to throw them away. They're not good for you. You truly cannot absorb enough vitamins and minerals from a one a day vitamin. You want to make sure that what you're getting is a whole foods vitamin. So the fruits and vegetables that are in this is apple, beets, carrots, tomatoes, uh, celery, blueberry, um, Brussels sprouts, green onion, parsley, raspberry, red cabbage, cucumber, asparagus, celery, kale, broccoli, spinach, strawberry, and green bell peppers. So you're getting a lot of whole foods, and that's what I mean by whole foods, in this vitamin. So we take two of these. When we first started them, we took one a day because Parker wasn't quite old enough for a full dose, but now he's up to two a day. So every day we take our vitamins. Every day he takes a vitamin D. This company is a really great brand. It's called Nordic Naturals. Um, they are just very sustainable. They source their stuff from, you know, really good parts of the earth. Um, this one, I found them because I used to take their omegas before I started doTERRA's omegas. And I really like how they um, are sustainable with their fish. They're really getting good, clean fish products when you're taking their omegas. So vitamin D is really, really important. If your kids are, um, it goes both ways. If they're getting enough vitamin D from like cheese, yogurt, milk, they may not need to take a vitamin D all year long. So for vitamin D, we only do this from October until like April or May for the cold season, basically, cold and flu season because Parker does eat a lot of dairy. He, you know, he gets his fair share of yogurt and cheese um, and milk. So I don't think that they need to be on vitamin D all year long, but during cold and flu season, it's absolutely crucial because it's an immunity booster, especially in a colder climate, like where we live in New Mexico and we're not getting outside enough to get that natural sunlight. I mean, Melissa, you're in California, so, you know, it's a little bit different for your family, but, it's not gonna hurt. Vitamin D is great for immune system. If you're nursing and your children are too little to take like a supplement, get the baby vitamin D drops. I don't have them with me, they're at my house. I'm at my mom's house right now. Um, I get the baby vitamin D drops and I put it on my nipple so that when I'm nursing, Noah's getting the vitamin D for her too because that's gonna just boost her immune system as well. All year long, Parker takes the vitamin C. This is also from the same brand, Nordic Naturals. They're very low in sugar. They're just a really good, clean company. I really like all of their products. So taking a vitamin C, we do do this all year long. If they're fighting something, you can up it. You can do it once or twice a day. Um, again, Parker doesn't like the doTERRA omegas. A lot of kids do. He was little. He's very picky with everything he does, so he's not into them. Uh, we take also the Nordic Naturals. We take their omega gummies. So it's just a little fish, um, which is their fish oil. He gets this once a day as well. Fish oil is also really good for your immune system. It's good for their brain, their eyes, their cardiovascular system. Um, I'm just a big, big fan of omegas in general for adults and kids. Um, during cold and flu season, we take elderberry syrup. 
there's lots of different elderberry syrups on the market. Gaia Herbs is one of my favorite brands. Again, they make really good, clean products. You can buy this at Whole Foods, Pharmaca, um, any health food store. We take this twice a day, everybody in our house, me, Patrick, and Parker. Twice a day, we take elderberry syrup, once in the morning and once at night. And then lastly, for our supplement routine is Colloidal Silver. This comes from Whole Foods. You can buy it online as well. Um, this is a really, really good, clean form of Colloidal Silver. Colloidal silver is kind of like an antibiotic, if you will, um, but it's mainly just for immune support. This boosts their immune system. So every day, Parker gets this once in the morning and once at night. It comes in a dropper, you fill the dropper, and he puts it right on his mouth. Um, also, I don't have it with me. Like I said, we're at my mom's house. Parker will also take the kids' doTERRA probiotic. It's called PB Assist. It comes in a little pack it about this big, this tall, and it's like this thin. We call it our blue candy. It's literally like, if you remember those pixie sticks growing up, it's literally like a powder form of probiotics. I cut it in half and he literally just dumps the powder in his mouth. It is so delicious. I find myself taking them too, especially if I've ran out of my probiotics. So he does use that and that does come from doTERRA. You have three hearts in your body. You have your heart, you have your gut and your brain. And if your gut's not healthy, the rest of your immune system becomes incredibly, incredibly compromised. So it's really, really important that your children are taking a probiotic as well as yourself. A probiotic is really gonna support their immune system. And if their gut's not healthy, that's when they just become very, very run down. That's when they become more susceptible to getting, you know, bacterias, infections, viruses. So I'm a huge believer in taking a probiotic as well. So that's kind of our supplement regimen um, as far as what we do on a daily basis. They did come out with a kid's collection of six oils, and we don't use all six of them regularly. We kind of use them as needed. He does use the protection blend every day, which is like a kid's version of On Guard. I do put On Guard on him also, and then I do put the protection on him as well. And I put it up and down his spine, the On Guard I put on his feet. The kids collection, you can use it on children and you can definitely use it on adults. The recommended age dosage or age range for the kids collection is three years old and older. So I haven't used them on Noah, even though a lot of the oils in them are very safe. I think it's more of like, uh, like the proportion, the proportion of oils versus the dilution amount. So I've kind of just stuck to, you know, my own personal usage for Noah, but I do use them on Parker. They're really great. It comes with a protection blend, which is like your immunity support. It comes with a focus blend. It comes with a calming blend. It comes with a brave blend to support their emotions. And then it comes with, um, I think it's called soothing. I remember correctly, it supports just like growing pains, aches and pains. If they have a fever from the flu and their body's sore and achy, you can use that one just to help calm their muscles and support them. So these are some oils that are good for just, you know, common things that we deal with as parents. So bedwetting, juniper berry and cilantro and cypress, those are really great. Bronchitis, cardamom, eucalyptus, on guard and breathe. Colic is good um, to use bergamot, cardamom, marjoram, lavender, wild orange, serenity, digestion. And it doesn't mean that you need all of these oils. It's kind of like maybe bergamot works really well for me, whereas maybe one of you will do better with marjoram. It's kind of like a little bit of trial and error to find what works best for you and your family. Um, or maybe you don't have bergamot or cardamom yet. Maybe you only have wild orange. So I'm kind of giving these as suggestions as to what will work with these symptoms until you have a collection where you have all the oils on hand and you find what works for you. Um, common cold and flu, cardamom, cedarwood, melaleuca, melissa, rose, thyme, and on guard. Croup is going around pretty bad right now. So arbovarte, Douglas fir, marjoram, lemon, eucalyptus, on guard, and breathe. Earache, melaleuca, and basil, you would apply it together right around the ears on the back. 
I do under the chin and down the neck. You could also put it on the bottom of the feet. Um, fever, patchouli, peppermint, on guard, wild orange, hand, foot, and mouth disease. That's the HFMD. That's a really big one that goes around, especially in daycares and elementary. My sister actually had it a couple years ago as a teacher. Um, Arbovarte, lemongrass, thyme, melaleuca, melissa, on guard, purify, any of those will work really well. Runny noses, lavender is known to stop a runny nose, so you can apply it right under their nose, along the bridge, and above their eyebrows. Lemon, pep peppermint, basil, and cedarwood. Teething, capaiba mixed with Siberian fur and lavender in a roller ball. If you do like five drops of each of those and fill the rest with coconut oil, you apply it underneath their jaw, down their neck, you can apply it above their lip if they're teething up top. If it's really bad, you could take one drop of clove and take the bottle like you would a perfume bottle and apply it on their gum lines mixed with a little bit of coconut oil or olive oil. And all of these here, you would apply them to the diffuser. You could put them down their spine at the bottom of your feet. The bottom of your feet, your skin is the thickest part of your body, but the pores are the thinnest. So when you apply oils to the bottom of your feet, your body's absorbing them within 30 seconds. So the skin is the thickest part on your feet. So for babies and kids, when their skin's still really sensitive, applying it to that thicker part of their body is gonna be a really good place to put them. And also up and down their spine. I will put some oils on their chest. Some of the oils that are more like methylated, like uh, breathe, eucalyptus and peppermint, if they're like under the age of like two or three until they can really talk to you and tell you what they're feeling, I try to avoid the chest for those areas just because sometimes it can be known to kind of compromise their breathing a little bit. So until they're old enough to tell you like, mom, I feel like I can't breathe or, you know, they can communicate some sort of science to you. Um, I am a little more cautious with like peppermint breathe and eucalyptus on their chest. I feel 100% safe putting it on the bottom of their feet and in a diffuser. Some of the ones for the chest are going to be really good are like cardamom, Douglas fir, Siberian fir, white fir, stuff like that. So here's some actual blends. Um, and if you want to take a screenshot of this, you're welcome to. Chill Out Blend um, is a mixture of cypress, frankincense, lavender, vetiver, chamomile, and ling ling with cedarwood. Common Cold is uh, melaleuca, lemon, on guard. <clears throat> um, Lights Out, this is a really good one for putting them to sleep. Vetiver, cedarwood, patchouli, seren serenity, and ling ling. The Fever Blend, I just discovered this one. Peppermint didn't work 100% for Parker. Um, patchouli and peppermint has worked really well for Noah. Growing Pains, Marjoram and Chamomile. Homework Helper for some of the older kids, Black Pepper, Grapefruit, Lime, Peppermint. My screen's blocking the rest here. Oh, sorry. Um, peppermint, Rosemary. Allergy blend is lemon, lavender, and peppermint. Pink eye, one drop of lavender, one drop of melaleuca. Apply it around the eyes, avoiding the eye area itself, and the crooks of the toes. So right here is your pressure point on your toes. So applying the oils to that area right here on the toes will really help that as well. Detoxing for little. So if your kids do come down with something or they're starting to show signs of something, put them in a detox bath. Give them a bath that has some Epsom salt and baking soda, and you can do two drops of frankincense, melaleuca, capaiba, or breathe. That's really, really good for this time of year. You can put them in there and let them soak for like 10 to 15 minutes, help detox their body from whatever's going on, fighting that cold and flu virus that's going around. So vaccines, I know it's a touchy subject. Some people are for it, some people aren't for it. We actually do vaccinate. We do the delayed vaccination series, so we go a little more often. But these are just some oils that will help. Um, so 
starting um, with lavender to put it where they got their injection after they've been injected with the vaccine. That will just help some, soothe some of that pain. On guard, starting it a month before the vaccines to build their immune system. Lemon, you wouldn't really do. That's more for adults. Um, Digestion to ease any tummy trouble. Breathe to open the following airways following vaccines. And then cilantro to rid the body of any heavy metals. Um, while we're talking about kids and babies, all of us moms need support as well. So here's a really nice blend to help moms kind of just chill out a little bit. Um, 10 drops of Lang Lang, 25 of Citrus Bliss, 10 of patchouli, and 10 of sandalwood mixed with carrier oil. Um, I found this chart from another oil lady in doTERRA. Um, kind of just shows your pressure points on your children's feet and some of the oils that you would use for them. So for head and teeth, you're going to see up here, copaiba, um, lavender, Roman chamomile, sinuses, copaiba, cardamom, frankincense, eucalyptus, helichrysum, uh, sinuses, chest area, solar plexus, uh, fennel, peppermint, and lemon is going to be really good for like digestive issues. Same thing with ginger, peppermint, and wild orange. Um, the pelvis area, frankincense, spikenard, melissa, turmeric, vetiver, and balance. Kind of like how she just outlined that there to show you, you know, different places that you would apply them. If your little kids have night terrors, um, you'd apply, sorry, this graphic's a little hard to read, myrrh and vetiver to the back of the night knees during the day, just like one or two drops. And then doing um, bergamot, serenity, and I think this was chamomile, I wanna say, applying that to the chest before bed and then diffusing serenity. I don't know why that graphic came out so poor, sorry about that. So that's kind of all I have there as far as different blends go and tips on what I do for our family. Does anybody have any questions or um, have any thoughts of things that you want to share on what you do for your family? What was it that you had in your diaper bag that you like take with you everywhere? I'm sorry, say that again. What was it that you have in your diaper bag? Like you had the little case that had a bunch so of- So I have this little case and Parker took the other one that I have as well, which is for Noah. Um, but so it's just an oil case that I carry around. So um, I have the Rose Touch. I have past tense in here for me. In tune, I use a lot on Parker. It's a focus blend just to kind of help him chill out a little bit. The one that I have for Noah, I have- um, Melaleuca Touch, I have Digestin Touch, I have Frankincense Touch, and On Guard Touch. And then I made her a blend um, to support her stomach because she has some like acid reflux. It's not really colic, but she just gets really like acidy reflux and spits up a lot. So I made a blend of cardamom, frankincense, and wild orange that I just rub right around her belly button and then I go up her chest like towards her throat. So I have that in there, and then I also have Correct X. So that On Guard, you always put on their feet, and the frankincense also? Yeah, so I put the frankincense on their feet every day, and then um, Noah gets, or excuse me, On Guard goes on their feet every day. Frankincense goes down their spine every day. And then for Parker, I do from the kids' collection, I do the protection blend down Parker's spine every day. So do you ever put like on guard on their chest? Um, not really. Is that like bad? The blend I have actually, um, I think I did it for like a blend that I made for Parker when he had a cough once. Um, uh -huh. on guard I definitely think is safe to put on their chest. I don't know why I, I don't, I wouldn't feel drawn to putting on guard on their chest though just because I feel like it's an immunity booster. So they're going to get more of the benefits going through their feet and their spine. Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of like, you know, starting to figure out how I can incorporate them like in my daily use. And I don't know why I think to put it on their chest, but 
I, I just need to like, get that thing. I mean, it. it's better that they're getting any of it than not at all. Um, I just am more inclined to put oils on their feet and spine than I am their chest. Um, like if they have like a respiratory thing or a congestion thing, I will apply to their chest. Um, like Parker, I'm very proud to admit he just turned four on Friday. He has never been sick ever. This last Christmas, he got his first sickness in four years. He's been in daycare since he was two years old. I don't think he's blessed with some supernatural immune system. I think it's that we're very, very proactive on using the oils and all the supplements that I shared with you. We do it, you know, on a regular daily basis. Well, there's times he comes home from preschool, you know, with like a runny nose or a low grade fever, but I attack with the oils immediately and I catch it to where it never becomes full blown. Well, over Christmas, he got his first sickness he's ever had. He had this God awful cough and he had 103 to 104 fever for about four or five days. I finally took him to the doctor and they said he just had a virus. They're like, there's nothing you can do about it. He's probably on the tail end of it. And of course, like the next day, his fever was gone and the cough like kind of lingered. Well, having Noah, you know, she was born November 7th. So at Christmas time, she was only like, I don't know, 10 weeks old or something. Like still very, very little. So I was very nervous. I kept saying like, Parker, don't touch her. Don't touch her. Don't touch her. Because I didn't want her to get anything. Well, guess what? She came down with a fever. She came down with a cough. I took her into the doctor Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I ended up taking her to two different doctors. Thursday, they finally diagnosed her with an ear infection and RSV. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I felt like a first time mom because Parker had never been sick. I didn't know what to do. Like I was freaking out and she's so little, you know, she can't tell you what's going on. So luckily, because Parker had been sick, I had already been using a lot of oils on her just to like protect her immune system. And I was doing the vitamin D on my nipples. So she was getting the vitamin D. Well, once they diagnosed her with RSV, they were like, you know, her cold, this cough will probably last two to three weeks. They gave me antibiotics for her ear infection, which I did use just because she is so little and I just wanted to help her feel better. Well, I made a blend and a roller ball for the RSV and it was, I can't remember if it was five or 10 drops. It must've been five just because she was so little, but I did cypress, lime, white fur, rose, copaiba, and frankincense, and then filled the rest with coconut oil. And I applied that to her chest and down her spine and the bottom of her feet, along with the on guard. And mm. I did that. It must've been like every couple hours at the very least I did it at every diaper change. I'm not even kidding you. Three to five days, her cough was completely gone, completely gone. And they said her cough would linger for two to three weeks. And again, I don't think she's like, has a really good, strong, you know, immune system. I mean, I am nursing, so she is protected in that regard as well. But I do think that the oils make a big difference, but you have to be consistent in using them, especially if they've already been hit with like this full blown, whatever it is, whatever the crud is, you need to attack it. And it's better to use less oil and use it more often than to like overdo it with the oils and give them too much too often. You know what I mean? Like do one or two drops and do it every hour or do one drop and do it every hour or five drops and do it every three hours. You know what I mean? You just, you have to be very consistent on how you're using them and applying them. And the oils don't make life perfect. You know what I mean? Our kids will still get sick. Clearly Parker did. Clearly Noah did. I know a lot of people who are avid oil users whose kids still get sick. They don't make life perfect, but they make life so much better. You guys, they make life so much better. You don't have to run to the emergency room at two o'clock in the morning when they have 104 fever and they're coughing their lungs up. You can get some oils, you can get their fever down, you can reassess in the morning after they've gone back to sleep. Um, 
you know, you, you just have to be proactive in using them and try things and ask questions and research and look up in your oil book for different things. And if you don't know, text me or text the person who enrolled you to ask for help and find out other things that they suggest. The other thing that I can't say enough about is the on guard soap. Wash your hands all day, every day with on guard soap. Carry the on guard hand sanitizer in your diaper bag. Excuse me. We spray our hands left and right with the on guard sanitizer. We wash our hands. We have the soap in all of our classrooms. Parker's daycare that he was at before we moved back to California, we moved so much that like I need to go back to all of our other preschools where he's been and try and get them started. But his first preschool that he started at when he was two years old, I got them to sign up with doTERRA. They have the hand soap in their classrooms and they diffuse oils all day long. I mean, you know, if your kids are in school, invest in their school a little bit. Donate a diffuser and some hand soap. Buy the multi-purpose cleaner for their school. Use the products and they will make a big difference. It's just, you have to be consistent with how you're applying them and, you know, switching things up. Like, if you use OnGuard every single day, that's going to be really good to build their immune system. But they, if they come down with something, then you need to look up in your oil book under immunity support and see what other oils are going to be good for their immune system. Because if you've been using OnGuard every day for the last three or four months and then they do get hit with something, now they're going to need a little bit of a shock to their body. So look up in the oil book and find what else is good for their immune system and start using that in addition to the on guard to kind of give them that extra boost that they need. Okay, that's really helpful. So the kids actually both just got RSV. And I'm sorry. They both, have, both of my kids just got RSV. So that's like what I'm dealing with right now. And it's just Adelaide they actually both haven't had a fever but this cough is just it's the just cough brutal. is really really bad so um i would definitely suggest you know making that blend as, at least with the oils you have or if you can order any of them i don't know if you've done your order this month yet if you can add any of those oils but also going to whole foods and getting these two products the elderberry and the colloidal silver this will make a big difference um bodhi's probably too little to take these but you could take it. I don't take colloidal silver nursing just because I feel comfortable taking it, but too many people have researched it and have scared me and said there's not enough proof for nursing. Um, uh -huh. So I don't take this, but I take this every day. And I'm okay. sure some of it's passing through my milk to support Noah's immune system. But I would definitely get Adelaide on both of these and I would have her take it every day. She's in school now. I mean, these are great. Yeah products and they're just going to help build her immune system and you know it may be full blown now but you can make it short lived i mean they said part noah's cough would last 2 to 3 weeks you guys i swear to god it went away in 6 days went away in six amazing days. so um i'm sorry cuz other people probably have questions but the rsv blend was it cypress lime copaiba rose and white fur? Yeah, so they don't make white fur anymore. They've replaced it with Siberian fur. Okay. So you could use Siberian fur and then frankincense. And it was um, like five or 10 drops each? Yeah, so for Adelaide, I would do 10 drops and for Bodhi, I would do five. Okay. And you just do all of those and then match whatever amount of oils in the roller ball with coconut oil. So I do five drops of each, and then whatever's left in the bottle, I just fill it with coconut oil. Okay, cool. And, and then you when just Parker's... apply that on their chest and down the spine. Yep. Okay, I'm going to try And then that. diffuse oils like oregano, um, melaleuca, lemon, on guard. Diffuse those oils like crazy. Okay. Yeah, it's really um it's a really nasty, nasty oil. season right now. It really is. It's just so hard. Um, because we're just we believe in it. It's just we have to really incorporate it into our life. And like there's so many times that I leave the house and I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot the oils and I don't have them in my diaper bag. So it's just like 
it just I gotta get used to like you know having them with me all the time and so put them where you're gonna remember you know like I put oils in my kitchen on my counter that we use I put a lot of oils next to the supplements that we're taking daily um put oils next to the changing station for Bodhi and then just go to you know Target or Amazon and buy like a little makeup bag I mean this is one from doTERRA but I mean you can just like go to Walmart or wherever and buy like a little makeup bag and make your diaper bag stash. And once you're getting to the point of getting routine, I mean, I'm so crazy just because I'm always so scattered, just partially my anxiety. Like I just am always overwhelmed and stimulated. And I now have it to where like I have my oils for my diaper bag and I have my oils for the changing station. So I'm not having to go back and forth because one more thing that I don't have to worry about just saves me that time and energy. So, you know, I have the oils that I use when I change her diaper right there, which is like on guard and frankincense and Mel Luca or whatever. But then in the diaper bag, I have like a duplicate of that. So if I'm out and about and she gets a stomach ache, like we were at the zoo the other day and Parker's stomach started hurting as soon as we walked into the zoo. And so I was so grateful that I had my digestion in the diaper bag and I could apply it to his stomach. You know, we're spending the night at my mom's house tonight. I am so happy that I have oils for the kids tonight because my parents have a ton of oils, but theirs are mostly in the bottles, you know, and they don't have a lot of like the kid friendly ones like cardamom and, you know, white fur and Siberian fur. They have more of like the adult ones. Um, so I'm just, I'm grateful that I have them in the diaper bag so that since we're spending the night here, I have them and I don't have to worry about it. So you know, that is the biggest part and it just takes a little bit of like an adjustment or a routine or kind of some note taking to get into the routine and the habit of putting them where you're going to use them and just making them a part of your routine every single day. So what I've been using is just like, for me personally, even I just take like on guard on my tongue and then I have frankincense under my tongue every day and I just do that like a couple times a day um is that bad to just kind of stick with one because I know you say like change it up but no I mean every day I take on guard copaiba and frankincense every single day but it's when you get hit with something that's where okay so like if I were to come down with a cold like the other day, my throat was really hurting. Even though I've been taking Copaiba, Frankincense, and On Guard, which are all really good for immunity boosting, my throat started hurting. So I kind of shocked my body and I made a capsule of like thyme, lemongrass, oregano, melaleuca. Um, I can't remember the others that I put in there. So that's when I started to like introduce new oils because I was already starting to feel like I was coming down with something. And after, you know, 24 hours of doing that, by the end of the day, my sore throat was completely gone. And then I maintained those additional oils for the next two or three days just to make sure nothing was lingering. So you can eat copaiba? You just put on your tongue? Oh, yeah. Oh, I kind of try that. putting it on my tongue. I used the oil for the kids and in the diffuser because they came out with soft gels for copaiba. So I take a soft gel every morning and every night before I go to bed. I take it twice a day. It's really good for your immune system. It's really good for your cardiovascular system, your respiratory system, your digestive system, but it's also really good for anxiety. And oh. we all know I'm very open about my anxiety that I need all the help I can get with that. So I take um, a Capiba and a Serenity soft gel every day, morning and night. And you sleep like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can put copaiba right on your tongue. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or any tips on things that you do for your family? No. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. I hope this call was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, um, or if you feel this would help anybody else, please definitely share it with them. Um, and I hope you guys have a good night. Take care of yourselves because <clears throat> the crud that is going around is bad. Everybody is getting it. It's like people are dropping like flies left and right. So especially Melissa, I know you're a teacher. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. And, you know, us moms need to stay healthy so that we can support our families. So thank you guys. Have a great night.
Thanks, Thanks. Janet. Good night. Bye. Bye.